This programme was made with support from the National Lottery Heritage Fund. On the Heritage Channel tonight, your favourite seaside pubs painting the town proud and Lincolnshire folk tales. Welcome to the Heritage Channel, where we explore the fascinating history of North East Lincolnshire in a monthly roundup of news, views and stories. Tonight we're in Cleethorpes to explore some of the town's oldest pubs, and we'll be catching up on the heritage news around the region. But first, new public artwork that aims to cheer up residents and visitors alike. Paint the Town Proud was an ambitious project led by community organisation Creative Starts to celebrate our cultural heritage with a series of magnificent murals on key sites around Grimsby. <laughs> Now it's the turn of Cleethorpe with a bright and cheerful memory maker by London-based artist Wolowski. From a prominent place on the wall of the Old Vic pub, it will brighten the outlook for local residents and welcome visitors to the town. A new heritage and construction skills event will be held on Saturday the 15th of June at Kings Hall Cleethorpes with organisers at North East Lincolnshire Council and local businesses showcasing some of the trades available to people in the area. An exciting educational project that celebrates the legacy of Sir Edward Watkin, the man who made Cleethorpes, is at the number one pub until the 15th of July. More details later in the programme. With the support of the National Lottery Heritage Fund, a heritage network led by Heritage Lincolnshire, brings together people who have an interest in heritage to help build collaborative networks across the borough and showcase local history, develop new projects and benefit from training opportunities. The next quarterly meeting is in June and everyone that's interested in North East Lincolnshire's heritage is welcome. Heritage Lincolnshire are also one of the partners in Lincolnshire Folk Tales. Led by Professor Rory Waterman of Nottingham Trent University, the project has collected over 40 tales so far, including Brinkhill Gold, Fan of the Fens, the Whole Beach Gamesters, and here in North East Lincolnshire, the Black Lady of Bradley Woods, the Grimsby Imp, and of course, the Tale of Grim and Havelock. The project includes events and workshops will be coming to Grimsby later this year. More information from the project website. The Grimsby Fishing Heritage Centre has launched a new group for adults with additional needs thanks to support from the National Lottery Heritage Fund. The sessions, which are held every Wednesday from 10 to 12, are led by the centre team with the help of guest speakers and local artists. Participants will discuss its exhibitions and the work that goes into bringing North East Lincolnshire's history to life. Grants for cultural and heritage projects are available now from Create North East Lincolnshire, thanks to funding from Arts Council England and the National Lottery Heritage Fund. A diverse range of people and projects are already benefiting from recent grant funding, including Steve Dixie, a photographer who explores natural and man-made features on local foreshores, Samuel Pearson, an actor, performer and aspiring puppeteer, and Grimm, an immersive play by Evie Henderson around the 1960s Grimsby fishing community. We will be featuring some of these in future programmes. In the meantime, you can find out more about the grants and the projects on Create North East Lincolnshire's website. Our Big Picture announced an open call under their Women's Photography Collective for submissions inspired by Stories of the Water to form a new exhibition in June 2024. 
The exhibition will form part of this year's Festival of the Sea, which is sailing back to Grimsby Town Centre on Saturday the 22nd of June. Expect some exciting events, activities and entertainment, securing its place as one of the highlights of the summer season. What's in breast milk will change from day to day and feed to feed. When it's hot, your breast milk gets thinner. If he's hungry, it gets a little bit thicker. It will also change to protect the baby against any infections the mother is coming to contact with. Not just even for feeding. When my daughter had an infection in her eye and a bit of dry skin, I used to put breast milk on her just to help heal. <laughs> it's magic. From the Queen Vic to the Rovers Return, the local pub has always been at the heart of the community. And strictly for the purpose of research, we've been out exploring some of the oldest pubs in the region. Some are still going strong, some have been repurposed and some have disappeared forever. But they all hold fond memories of good times past. This month, Gemma Lingard and the team are in Cleethorpes, visiting some of the popular establishments voted by our viewers and revealing which is your favourite. Hey, up, duck. What'll it be? Usual. Coming right up. Hey, and when you've enjoyed your pint, why not come with me for a tour of some of the oldest pubs in Cleethorpes? Drink up, then. Hey, and no funny business, otherwise you'll be out. Dodgy accent aside, well, for now anyway, we begin our tour here at Cleethorpe's railway station, where you'll find the number one pub, located on platform one of the railway station. We believe that this building, built by the railway company in 1863, is the most important historical building in Cleethorpe's by a mile. First of all, it was the railway company that saved Cleethorpes and built the resort. Secondly, it, this building is the only one of its kind left. The building hasn't changed that much. If you look at it from the outside, it's still the same shape. The actual building itself is still intact. I like how it is, and we don't really want to change it. In the front, we've got quite a bit of uh, memorabilia from the train station signs. Uh, in the back room, we've got some memorabilia on the walls. And the Watkins room, brand new. Uh, we found out about Mr Watkin, I didn't know anything about Mr Watkin until recently and I didn't realise what he did for Cleethorpes. Now, 2019, I met the amazing Jeff Scargill and he created the National Watkin Society. He is passionate about Watkin. It was Jeff who said, come on, just read about this man. And in so doing, not only did we create the Grimsby and Cleethorpes Watkins Society, but we all found out more and more about this amazing man and what he did for Grimsby and Cleethorpes. The introduction of the railway by Sir Edward Watkin played a huge part in bringing more visitors to Cleethorpes and pubs, including this one. In fact, this pub is the only remaining 19th century building of Watkins Railway, which came to Cleethorpes back in 1863, and it turned Cleethorpes into a popular holiday resort. Known as the Railway King, it was Sir Edward Watkin who extended the railway from Grimsby to Cleethorpes, waking the sleepy fishing village up and transforming it into a thriving resort. The railway came in 1863 and Watkin was a key 
protagonist. The board objected and said, well, there's nothing actually, so that's why I built a railway there. So Watkin fought his board, persuaded him to do it. The single line is opened with this building. You could drink here, but it was known as the refreshment rooms. Well, definitely one of the oldest buildings, because it became a pub after being a refreshment room. I love it, it's a bit of history, and we're lucky to live here and work here, so. So the railway comes here, and then, 20 years later, is expanded six platforms that we know today. Then another problem. Cleet also, was, it was built upon boulder clay cliffs and huge chunks would fall in the sea, as big as houses, in spite of some reports, every storm. The cliff was getting within six feet of the properties. It would have only taken two or three more years for the whole lot to go. And so Watkin had persuaded his board to build a railway here, and thousands are coming, they're making really good money, but they were about to lose it all if nothing was done. And so he persuaded his board, after many arguments, to give quite a significant percentage of their share capital to save Cleethorpes from falling in the sea and build the resort that we know today. In 1885, the Cleethorpes improvements were completed, costing £12 million in today's money. This was all part of Watkins' plan to make Cleethorpes flourish. With more visitors coming to Cleethorpes in the 1900s, there was an increase in the number of hotels and pubs at this time. But sadly, not all those venues exist anymore, including the Clee Park Hotel. This distinctive building, which was designed by Ernest William Fairbrother for Hewitt Brothers, was first opened in August of 1890. The hotel occupied a prominent position on the corner of Grimsby Road and Park Street, and it became a much-loved local landmark. Sadly, the Clee Park was knocked down in 1990. The demolition team started work in August of that year, so the pub stood for exactly a century. And just behind me is another popular venue, the Dolphin Hotel, located on Alexandra Road and Market Street. It was a favourite of Dave Smith, Patricia Keeble and Vonnie Ward Wilkinson. Believed to be built on land owned by Alexander Grant Thorold, it opened in the 1820s to accommodate guests in the growing market of seaside holidays. The venue has changed names many times over the years and has been a bar and also a nightclub. The Lifeboat Hotel was located on the corner of Queen's Parade and it recalled the days where there was a lifeboat station at the foot of Cliff Road. It was a favourite with Pam Marr, Nicky Dobson and Simon Barrell. Mark Spence said, The lifeboat was my favourite, beer with a great view. Lynn Barnsley added, Great jukebox and atmosphere, shame that it was knocked down for expensive flats. In 2002, a huge crane dominated the skylines on the Kingsway in Cleethorpes as work began on the new waterfront luxury flats being built by F.A. Wold. Willie's Pub, located at Highcliffe, is a popular pub in Cleethorpes. But did you know, it was once called Ye Old Barn Tea House. The old world surroundings, mentioned in the advert, was little more than a decade old. The building having been extensively rebuilt in 1927. The building is now Willie's Pub. We're now at Seaview Street, where a number of well-known pubs are located. And some of you may remember, back in the day, the popular nightclub JD's, which stood on the corner just there. And also down Seaview Street is the Nottingham. Many of you chose the Knots as your favourites including John Siddell, Leyland Penn and Alan Goulding, who said, I looked into the bar about a month ago and it had not changed in 50 years. Same tables in the same place where we used to play cards and dominoes. That brought back lovely memories as a 20 year old, now 70 years old. A 
And just nearby is the Fisherman's Arms, which is located on the corner of Wardall Street and Seaview Street. The pub was often the site of inquests into the death of sailors. But today, it is affectionately known by the locals as the Fish. Further down Seaview Street was the Queen's Hotel. The present building was designed in 1936 by Walter Willis. It replaced an earlier hotel on the same site, but now it reopened as a restaurant. Everyone has memories of a misspent youth in their favourite pub, but what was your favourite pub in Cleethorpes? It was a close call between the dolphin, the knots, the lifeboat and the fish. And the winner was the lifeboat. Join us next time when we'll be in Grimsby to explore the history and heritage of some of their oldest pubs in town. Cheers. Well, that's all from the Heritage Channel tonight. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel or join our Facebook group to make sure you don't miss any of our programmes. In this month's episode on our sister channel Billboard TV, we meet a rising star in the British art movement, Hugh Richards reviews the latest book releases and Olivia Coleman features in Film Review. From everyone at the Heritage Channel, thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you next month for more Heritage news, views and local stories. This was all part of Watkins' plan to bring prosperity. What was it? Pros 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 prosperity. prosperity. This was all part of Watkins' plan to bring prosperity. This was all part of Watkins' plan to bring prosperity. Pro <laughs> prosperity. 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 <laughs> prosperity. Pros prosperity. Prosperity. This was all part of Watkins' plan to bring prosperity. Pro no. The programmes on the Heritage Channel are made with support from the National Lottery Heritage Fund.